on the road, worship the spirit. We are so excited that you have joined us today. Those online and those who are here to worship the spirit. We have been our series, God on worship. And today we're talking about the end of things that God knows and leads back to us. So let us celebrate and prepare ourselves for our choir to sing for us today. God bless you. Amen.
today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord. Look, I'm ready. 
Amen. Praise God today. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord one time with our hands. Amen. Amen. Every Wednesday, 
Before that, we have prayer at 6 p.m. If you would like to take part, so prayer is at 6. Bible study starts at 6.30 to 7.30. We ask that you join us, okay? We send the Zoom link. We send out an email every Sunday morning. It has that link. And if you go ahead and join us for Wednesday Bible study, you get to join our text link where we send that same information as a reminder so you can be a part of that experience. All are welcome. We have a performer in front of us right here. Okay. And the last bit of news for today, help is wanted. We, talked, we had a 15-minute meeting as promised last Sunday. We are preparing for Advent season. And so we would like to decorate the sanctuary and our board. So the more people we have, the quicker this runs. So, if you are able, we ask that you stay after service today to help us decorate for Advent. Even if you put one thing up, you have done enough. Okay? Of course, more will be appreciated, but we'll take the one. Okay? Because the more, the merrier. Okay? All right. Well, with that, that's all we have of the all the news. And we have now. Song by the choir, and then we'll move into the offering. And with that, let's hear what Jesus promised.
of God. My friends, my friends, you can continue to celebrate and give the Lord praise as we celebrate giving. Amen. We are going to experience giving. You know, we have many plans in store for this upcoming year, 2023. But we haven't quite made it there yet. We have two more weeks in this year. We are planning to do some things with our elders as the month of December. So if you are giving today, please keep that in mind. Amen. We have many ways to give. We can give the cash out, which is dollar sign, all the gold UMC. We can give via PayPal, which is on our website, all the gold UMC.org, and click the give button. We can give text to give. Text A R U M C to 73256. And of course, we have the mail system. You can mail your checks to 640 on the road. Stone Mountain, Georgia, 383. As I said before, we have several ways to give. And one of our mission and outreach efforts will be in December as we are engaging our most vulnerable and most valuable members that are our seniors. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and wonderful God, we're so thankful, God, that you give to us every turn, oh God. You own everything in your mind that you've given us things in our own. And we say thank you. God, we thank you for the hands that are given today. They're given through their time, their finances, God. They're given through their talents. We thank you, God. May God bless the offering. Let it multiply. Let us be to use it to feed and care for your people, God, and to help build your kingdom as co neighbors with you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And as a reminder, my friends, we also have a basket in the back. And you can drop the altar on the there. Praise God. Now we're going to have our choir to come back with our Samani selection. Use me, Lord. Amen. Amen.
blessed to be used by the Lord, amen? What a blessing it is to be used by God today. I don't know about you, but there's nothing worse than being used by somebody you that doesn't have it. My God, my God. But being used by God, you at least got eternity on the way. Amen? Praise God today. And we're so thankful for our worship team and our choir and our musicians. We're thankful also for our audio video team. Let's give them a hand clap. It's more than a motion, my friend. Yeah, yeah, it's more than a motion. To come and make sure everything is prepared and ready. And as the devil would try to mess with our audience today, but the devil is alive. Amen? And we're thankful for the amen and amen. My friends, we will not be before you long. I am having some challenges. There's something going on up here, so we won't be long today until we figure out what is causing my allergic reaction <clears throat> here at the church. So the devil is alive. Amen. Uh -uh. Uh. I tell you, we don't know what it is, but we're going to figure it out. So let's go to the Lord and pray. Amen. Gracious and wonderful God, we're so thankful. God, we didn't know on last Sunday would be today. Huh. And God, as they said, oh, you touched us with the finger of love, God. And you allowed us to see this day. How thankful we are, God. And God, we prepare to share with your children today, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you allow the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart to accept them by sight, oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer, oh God. I stretch my hand to thee, oh God, to you are the only help that I know. The vow would draw myself from me, oh brethren, shall I go? Speak the blood of Jesus today. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we ask it all. Amen. 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 My friends, we are continuing with our series, God's Ownership. And we are also taking so many trips to this book, once again, The 33 Laws of Stewardship by David Sutherland and Kurt Norway. I invite you to purchase this. As you can tell, it is very thin and it is on point. It will bless your life. The 33 Laws of Stewardship is an excellent, excellent read. And you can also share this with your young adults, so they're not behind the egg ball when they get to be a little bit more mature with their finances. Amen? It's teaching them in advance about stewardship and generosity. God's ownership. Today we're talking about giving. Oh, oh look at God. Let's get started. <laughs> yeah, we want God to give, but we're talking about giving. Amen? Praise God today. We're coming from Malachi, chapter 3. And I'm going to read to you the 8th through the 12th verses, but our key verses are 10 through 11. I'll read Malachi chapter 3, the 8th through the 12th verses, with our key text being the 10th and the 11th verse. I'm reading from the Common English Bible today. And it reads, Should a person deceive God? Yes, you deceive me. Now, in some translations, it says wrong. But you say, how have I deceived you with your tenth part, gift and offering? You are being cursed with a curse, and you, the entire nation, are robbing me. Bring the whole tenth part to the storage house, so there may be food in my house. Please test me in this, says the Lord of heavenly forces. See whether I do not open all the windows of heaven for you and empty out a blessing until there is enough. I will threaten the one who wants to devour you so that it doesn't spoil the fruit of your fertile land and so that the vine doesn't abort its fruit in your field, says the Lord of heavenly forces. All the nations will consider you fortunate for you will be a definite name, says the Lord of heavenly forces. Now, I know most of us have heard this translation in our uh, more uh, uh, younger days, when we say it like that. Uh, and we've probably heard it in the King James Version of the Bible. 
We try to know the same right there is who? As a man robbed God. Yet you have robbed me. And tithes and offerings. Have you heard that one before? Anybody heard that before? <laughs> All right, let's see if you heard this one again. <laughs> but you say, how should we return? To the person. Give me one second here. <coughs> <clears throat> when a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, what end have we robbed you? And tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that they may be meat and mine house. And prove me now, her with, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he should not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall you, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time of the field, says the Lord, and all the nations to call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, said the Lord of hosts. Now I know that you have maybe heard that translation more than the CEB translation. I know that you've heard it and it's talking about time, but I know when we talk about money, we can sometimes get a little attitude about it. Amen. I, when I heard it the first time, I got mad, you know, I, I'm like, God, I'm not watching you. I, I got mad when I heard that. And I, I, I didn't have a great understanding of what God was saying to me in this case. You know, we, we, we don't want to talk about money. Everybody can talk about giving, but the church, and when you go into public or Kroger, you talk about money, because you're going to spend money to buy those goods and services. When you go into the mall, you might talk about Money, because you need money to purchase things from the mall. And she look at the, the Black Friday special. Oh, raise your hand. And you look at them. Do you know what they have to tell for you? All the surfers have been coming out of here. Your emails are full of great specials and great values at this time of year. And I'm sure you have your budget. But it takes what to get those things? It takes what? It takes money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody can talk about money, but the church, I, I have a hard time with that because God owns everything, even the money that we work for, the money that's been inherited to us, or the money that we've been blessed with. Everybody can even bring their money up and say, I don't have enough, or I have too much, and I'm going to do it. It is my proclamation today that we will have all that God has in store for us. Amen. I am believing that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we don't have enough to store. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take God and God's word and not worry about anything else. I'm not going to tell any man, woman, child, drunk, cow, anything. Help me not to believe God. I know God's blessings are on our side. I know God has windows and windows of blessings ready for us to receive. Oh, we got his word to talk about money. Right, right, right. We will talk about sex. <laughs> we'll gossip. We'll talk about all. We'll talk about politics. But this money thing kind of keeps us kind of tangled up. And then you be like, money is my business, Pastor. Don't ask me about the money. You're, you're even taking somebody told me earlier. I, I asked you what's in that box. This is my second time at It's about money. A box has been sitting in our interest way for about three days. And somebody has asked me twice about the box. But it's what? Money in the box. They better have these physical words and five dollar bills or whatever's in that box was paid for. Believe me. Money, money, money is a topic that we must have a conversation about. In the biblical text, we hear prayer or praying 289 times. We talk about love in the Bible 363 times. Give or giving is talked about 1,043 times at least. So money matters to God. If it's a 
thousand times versus prayer. What they tell you? <laughs> if you only see prayer in the Bible 289 times, and you see giving 1,043 times, this must be important. God has a tremendous emphasis on giving because God did what in John 3, 16? God gave. God gave. God was generous and God's given to us. And John 3, 16, it says God gave us what? Only begotten Son. So God is a generous giver to us. And all that we have, God has given to us. Uh, God has given us our time, our talents. God has given us the, the breath that we're breathing right now, the eyes that we can look and the, the, the man we can walk on. God has given us all of those things. And yet, Sometimes we hold back from God. You know, I, I heard a story like this, that uh, uh, this man had come to church and, 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 and he had a great time with his family and he was there. But once he got back in the car, the man still, the music was too loud, the sermon was too long, and the light was too dark in the church and it just, it wasn't good, the building was too hot. And his young son said, to him, well, Dad, you, you may be right, but I got to admit it was a good show for a dollar. <laughs> the man put one out of the in the altar. I heard another story like this. It says that there were two men, Adam, that were there on an island. They had not lost. They were not, they were not there to have a good time and to, to kind of explore the island and see what was going on. And they were lost. And the first man said to the second one, Well, aren't you afraid you're about to die here? And the second man said, oh, no, mm -mm. I make $100,000 a year, and I tie a little bit. My pastor's going to come looking for me. Look at God. Yes, yes. I'll be calling now on for myself. And what if my member who retired me from the $100,000 preacher? Our money is important. It amazes me as people of God. Amen, people. Praise the Lord, people. Shouting how good God is, people. Asking God to deliver us, people, and remove the chains off our life, people, and the people that are fast and pray without ceasing, people, or the people that say God loves them, the everlasting love, and who is for me is more than the whole world against me, kind of people. Uh, the people that we say that God took his only son to die for those kind of people, uh, the Easter people, the one that says that all the little of the bad and the bright and morning star kind of people, uh, the people that understood that he was crucified on Easter and he rose on Easter Sunday. Those kind of people are afraid to talk about money, but my God has told me that we have everything we need. According to God's riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And our text today is three simple points about money. Now, now, now we can give them a whole kick about tithes and ten percent. And I know some will say, Well, Pastor, we're in the New Testament. They're not talking about money. Oh, yes, Jesus is. <laughs> He's talking about tithing. It's because you read in Hebrew, it talks about how. Abraham had given the priest, the keys of that, a cow. Oh, go back and read your Bible, my friend. It's in the, it's in Hebrew, and it's also in Genesis, when it happened. The, the first kind of notion about tithing in the Bible was in Genesis. I know that you thought I'm sorry, I'm not a tithing. <laughs> no, it started in Genesis. Because it says, Abraham tells Malachi. I'm going to give you a tenth of all that I own. And then Paul had the audacity, took the dinner, to bring it up again in Hebrew. Even Jesus talked about tithing. He talked about it when he said that don't be like the Pharisees and scribes who tithe. <laughs> they tithe. But the heart is different. God wants to be comfortable talking about money. Because it can, it can help you be spiritually mature. It can grow you up talking about money. You, you can become a big girl in the morning. You can, you can sit in the big seat when you want to talk about money and God. Be spiritually mature. See, see, the Lord says that God will do what? Open up the 
windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. But you have to be willing to trust God with what you have that God has given you. You have to be willing to know that God has only leased it to you. God said, you have taken from my home. And then you probably said, well, you know, what does the church need my money for? Spiritual mature people understand that. It's a mic that we have moving. It's why we need to go to town. It's a real fact. But even more than that, God is trusting you for what God has placed under you to be a steward and a manager. It's a form of obedience. It's a form of worshiping God when you're willing to yield. It shows you're mature. It shows you trust God with all that you have. I told some people a story about a man that tithed every year to 10%. And then he was blessed, so he added a percentage each and every year of what he's going to give back to the church. He saw that every time he increased it, he was increasing his faith. Not because he was watching anything God's going to give, but we get it mixed up. Okay? Just because you give doesn't mean that God's going to automatically give back. That's the truth of the matter. And we're going to show that today in some of our, our uh, uh, talks for today. But what I'm saying to you is this. That man increased his giving by 1% every single year. He started at 10. In 14 years, he had increased to what? 10 plus 14 is what? 24% of his giving. And he said to me, he said, no, I, 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 that's a little tough. <laughs> 10 and 24 is a little tough. He said, but I'm going to trust God because I haven't missed a week. He was spiritually mature. He, his faith grew so. Not because he had gotten so much money that it was earned, but there were some other things he was believing God for for his life. And he tied. He knew the storehouse required his giving. So I always remember that tithing helps us to acknowledge that God is the source of all that we have. Tired is about giving back what God has given you. Tired is feeding the places that come from God at the world. Think about it. The money you give, we are doing outreach and ministry with. We are using to serve God's people. Then God says, text me in this. God's trying to say to you, if you're not quite mature yet, test me. See what I'll do for you. See, that's why he's doing because he knows we need a little bit of push sometimes. And man, we, we, God says, see if I'll do it for you. Now, God is saying, test me. God has already shown us how much God loves us because of what he did with his son. God has already shown us how much God loves us because we're still on the earth and God has work for us to do. God has already shown us how much God loves us because the things we did back then, nobody knew about it. <laughs> God kept on the cover. What I'm saying to you is that God loves you. And now God is saying, test me, I'll take God for that offer. I trust God enough to test him with my gift. To, to, to test God and say, God, I'm going to trust you with this 10% and believe I can do more with 90 than I could 100. And the man I told you about is still increasing his power to this very day. That is a spiritually mature person because he knows you can't take it with you. He knows that there's a need for it. He is aware that the, 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 the church is using it because the church has a need. And the community as well. So you have to be spiritually mature to understand. And remember, if you want to talk about New Testament giving and you want to go to Acts, they happens all the time. In Acts, they did everything, not 10. And New Testament. Yeah, they can't read it. In Acts, they gave everything else. The Bible says they all gave what they had so that the people could be faithful. Not only would it make you spiritually mature, Secondly, it is an abounding of blessings. What do I mean by that? When the Lord tells you that the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and empty out a blessing you don't have enough, I, what is your mind going to use about God saying, I will open the windows of 
happy and pull you out of blessing. You don't have room enough to store. My mind goes really wild and big. I mean, I can think of the most awesome things God can use me to do when he's opened up the blessing for us at window. Or be willing to allow God to do that for you. Abounding in blessings. Blessings of your health and blessings of your family, blessings of your children graduating from college, and blessings of them find the right mate, and blessings that you've been healed in your body and that you can move forward. You couldn't walk, but now you can walk like nobody's business. Blessings that you have to take that medicine anymore because your body is now healed. Blessings abounding of blessings. Have you ever said, God, I got enough? I don't need anything else. You bless me. They used to say it like this, Brother Walker. If, if, if you don't do another thing, you've already done what? Enough. Yeah, yeah. Abounding of blessings because you trust God to heal. And, and, and I know it's tight. I know that we don't feel when it comes to letting go of that money. I, 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 I've been there. I first started tired at 21 years of age. And let me tell you something. It was tough. But I, I, for a personal testimony, I haven't missed anything. And yeah, I've read some times. Oh, Lord, I've read some. I, 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 I gotta take this over here. I don't know how to do it from the But God said, the way was open. Bless me. You never know where it's gonna come from. But you're trusting God. And something about fear and money that stops us at our place. We don't believe God. We don't believe that check, but we won't believe God. We don't believe that God can stretch it and multiply it. We do not believe it. The message Bible says is like this. Test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Do you have any dreams today, my friend? Or do you believe in God for anything today? It may just be held up because of your gift. Now, 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 I don't believe I swear the gospel. I do not. But I have the who do believe in giving back to God what was owed to God. Not because I'm going to get the money back. But I am doing some things for the future as well. Trust God for this abounding blessing. Who needs an abundance of blessing in your life right now? Who needs it? Who is able to say, God, I need it right now. You're about to go through the house and you're going to spend your money on things for your family. What a beautiful thing to do. Because some people can't even do that. But if you have some abundance, you can do that. And what God is saying, he trust me with this man and so Trust me. I tell you that 10% I'm giving you to give back will blow your mind. It, it will allow you to see what's going on, the ministries that can take place. And, and we're going to share a little bit of that with you a little bit later on, but the ministry, we can help so many more people. That is an abundance of blessings. How do you feel when you're giving to people? It is a blessing to be able to give and see others get the things that they need, not want, but need. It is so wonderful. The benefits of tithing, spiritual maturity, abundance of blessing, and finally, not only that, <laughs> I, I, if you can't see God blessing you, death and those two things, my God, my God, we are in trouble. Preparing for the future. The text says that God will keep the locusts, the devourer, off your stuff. I believe it. I believe because I trust God enough with his five cents that God bless you with, that God will keep the locust. Anything that comes to devour your money, what God has given you, God will keep it away. And the heavenly host, through your Bible. Now, God sends the whole host of heaven to watch over your finances. Look at God. And you don't want to trust God with, with the 10%. And God is sending a whole army of heaven to watch over you, watch over your family, watch over your health. My God, my God. God, yes, sign me up. Sign me up for it, God. You're going to send all this because of me? Yes, God. Sign me up. It's preparing you for your future. You know, we talk a lot about generational wealth, legacy, 
right? It's important to have generational wealth so we can see our family move further ahead than we did. But my friends today, this wealth that God has to offer, you can't pay for it. You can't work enough hours in a year for this wealth. You cannot have enough 401k and stocks and bonds for this kind of wealth that God preparing for your future. The benefits of giving back to God allows you to give back to not only your family, even those around so they can have a better presence and a better future, my friends. God is saying, trust me with this. Trust me. It's scary. I know even some, the, 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 your heart may even stop when you watch this thing. My God, my God. But God said, I got you. I have you. I, I, I'll tell you about the time of, a pastor was going to a man to get a pledge. He was going to get this pledge of $100,000. And the pastor told the man, uh, uh, let's stop for one second and third. Or you give it from your heart. Because what you're about to do is prepare for the future of this church. See, see, there's a preparation that $100,000 for the future of all the people we have yet to meet, my friends. And I mean the droves of people God is going to send this way. Those that don't know Christ. That's preparing for the future. The man stopped. He put his pen down, put his checkbook down, and the pastor said this. If your heart is not in if you're not giving it from a great place, if you're only giving it to get something back, don't write the check. They never got the $100,000, my friend. God's okay with that. The church can also ministry. The church didn't meet, miss a beat, a beat. I promise you, it didn't. God met the need because God knew what God had for them in the future. God is inviting you today to this window of blessing that is ready for you. I, I said earlier that this, this window of blessing is, is, is not just about what you can get back. And so what we did was we, 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 we the worship team, we, we thought about this thing and, and we prayed about it. We said, now how can we show them how God is blessing people throughout? Well, how can we show them that it's not all about getting money back? We don't give because we're expecting God to give us back $100,000. We don't give for that. We give for so many other reasons, as we said before, to be spiritually mature, to have an abundance of blessings. That's how we give. And we found in our text a few instances about money. This lady in 2 Kings, chapter 5, Naaman, who was a very important man. You know how important people are. <laughs> you know how important people are. You got to get them right. They're important. You know, don't come talk to me. Come talk to Right, that's who Naaman was. Naaman wanted to give money to get a healing. That's how we do it. You can't pay for this. Naaman wanted to talk. Your money is not going to always give you something back. Naaman wanted to give money to be healed. He had leprosy. The prophet told him, go to this river over here and dump yourself in. And Naaman said, I'm too good to do that, Sister Martha. I wouldn't dare be caught in that river. We have much more clean rivers that I can dump myself in. And Naaman said, no, I'm not going to do it. The prophet said, if you want to be healed, your money can't heal you. We're going to take the offer. <laughs> but your money is not going to heal you. Go in this nasty, dirty, filthy water and be healed. Naaman was healed, my friend. Your money can always heal you. But his money gave him access. Amen. The church needs our giving so we can have access to some things. Then in 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. Go back and read this. The lady, a widow, and her son. Elijah came to her and said, You know, I need for you to fix me. Y'all ain't have to do it. I don't know. She said, Sir, I would love to do it. But all I know is a little bit of hope. It's a little bit of wheat. That's all I know. If I didn't say, Trust God with what you have, she did. It. And she gave it. All she had. When was the last time you gave all you had to trust God? When you just stepped out of 
incredibly destructive God. That's what she did. Read the story. And when she did it, God blessed her with all overflowing. She went from a little bit of oil like this to God bless her with all like this. All back in the day was worth tons of money. Can you imagine you trust God with nothing? And you look up, your whole future is set. Not only her, that's Old Testament, New Testament. When you give up to God, you're also given to help the community. And so we had a little boy. We just talked about this in Bible study. Who had a two piece backpack. He had two fish, five loaves of bread. The little boy did. From John 6, 1 through 16. And what he did, given all that he had, he gave. And when he gave all that he had, God took what he gave and multiplied it. And fed over 5,000 people, not including women and children. We're inviting you today, have you trusted God with all that you have to feed a community? And not only that, when he had two pieces and five loaves of bread, when it was done, they had 12 basketfuls. God had taken what the little one offered and multiplied it. God's inviting you today to take what you have, and God will multiply it with 12 baskets full of money to feed the community of God. Yeah. That is opening up a window of blessing that we don't have room enough to store. Remember, they have one sack lunch. God takes our 10% and multiplies. Then we have the, the widow who came as Jesus was watching in Luke 21, the first and the fourth verse, Jesus was watching all the rich people give their offering. And they were giving their offering and they were going by. And you know how we do when we have the money to give? It's no problem. We walk real fast. We're not hesitant. We don't mind giving. God is inviting you, though, to look to give from your heart. Mature. She came, this lady did, and I can see her in my, I can see it. She came on to her, it was a big tall instrument they had, they just kept the money, about this tall, with her pen, she dropped her pen in there. And Jesus said, she'll see her before ain't see anybody else, but she gave that was it. She gave them one penny. Some translations say two, some say one. She gave one penny. And she was highly favored. So she didn't matter what she had. She trusted God enough to say, This is my offering. This is all that I have. So the question goes back to Will we walk God? Oh, we trust God with all that we have. Will you trust God with this lady did? Will you trust God with the little boy did? I told the Bible said it proved that my little nine-year-old nephew gave an offering. My sister was sick during our mom's funeral. She couldn't go. She hadn't worked a month. And I said, hey, Sam, let's just put our money together. She needs some help. He was the first one to come. I took my envelope. First one to come, hey, I got $11. And somebody turned back around, I didn't take this in Bible study. Somebody turned back around and gave me $25. Because he gave that 11 Guess what he did? He bought it to him. Two ain't done this in my mind. I said, no, buddy, keep this money. He gave like a little boy out of what he had. This lady gave her next. We hold on to what God has given us. And she blessed. Not only was she blessed, her son was sick later on. And then he, he became healed because she blessed the man of God, the church. And namely, tried to use money to be healed. It didn't happen. We're inviting you today. 
But take a look at how you do it. We're inviting you to take a journey of time and take a fact. And some may say, Pastor, I, 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 my finest one that you do is the true fact. So we want to say. Can you trust God in one? God is trusting you with a hundred. And, and, and maybe you don't want to say, can you believe God brought the two percent? Three percent? Because the thing that God is calling all of us to do will blow our minds. And, and, and at the end of the day, God will multiply what we give. And our children will see us being faithful. My friends, we invite you to think about it. And as we come and I'm going to close and we'll invite uh, uh, our uh, finance team member, Dr. Kimberly Benetton, to come up and share with us. He's on our finance team that's going to come and share. I really want to be prayerful about it. You're giving. Yes, I can dance and uh, share some uh, great videos with you, but we really want to come from your heart today. About giving and trusting God. That's all it is. With what God has placed in your hand to be a man to open. Next week we're talking about your, your gift, your talent. Are you trusting God with that? Dr. Kim, come on up. Let's give her a hand to tell her about what we do. All right, thank you. to thank you for your support over the last year during our uncertain time. Your kindness has not gone unnoticed and has allowed us to be a multi-generational gathering of people transformed by worship of God. During this last year, we have worship experiences indoors and outdoors and added online and virtual experiences, provided children and youth activities, touched over 100 persons with food and other resources, and supported all the road elementary school students and teachers. Your generosity has also provided lunch for DeKalb County firefighters. We believe God has more blessings in the next year. Your financial generosity allows all good road to continue the operations of the church. We also developed evangelism and outreach programs to engage the community, programs for children and youth and young adult ministry, updating the outdoor prayer and picnic areas, improving the field for outdoor activities, chapel and fellowship area leasing possibilities, physical improvements to the entire property, continual spiritual growth and development of the membership. These are just a few programs all good will live out the love, justice, and mercy of Christ as change agents. We need your financial support to be the agents of change. Our 2022 budget is $198,000, which is about $16,500 a month. We will see God multiply our finances to meet the needs of the church and the community. Would you consider pledging today to support the church? Please pray about your pledge and the amount God asks you and your family to support the church financially. As we continue to plan for 2022, our planning will continue, well, our planning will include faith and the number of pledges to support God's vision for all good. Please pledge Sunday on December 5th, Pledge Sunday, excuse me, is December 5th. And we are asking all pledge cards to be returned, and we will celebrate God's faithfulness. Thank you for your continued support of all good and your faith journey. Would you continue to pray for the work God has designed for our community of faith? We are looking forward to announcing that God has fulfilled the need and multiplied. The pledge cards will be available at the close of worship in the, in the narthex on your way out. 
and thank you from the Pineapple team. Amen. Thank you. We appreciate our finance team. They continuously look at our finances so we can do ministry, guys. You know, conditions will never be perfect for us to be doing. It's not. I mean, it's never going to be perfect. But our faith is what helps us get it through. But she said, I could never share sure with her. The flesh cards are available <clears throat> on the table, the pink tablecloth in the back, where she can turn to play about giving to the church. December 5th is going to be flesh first, first Sunday in December. And <clears throat> I know <clears throat> that you have to think about it and be prayerful about it, but we want to celebrate on that day and have fun on that day of believing God for all the plagues to come through. And then we want you to know that we'll come back and say we are at X amount. Can we believe God for more? Well, we're hoping we can come on this first round. We're hoping He will join us in the vision the ministry, the passion, and the love for the word God called us to do. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh, gracious and wonderful God, we thank you. God, it takes all of our faith. <clears throat> and for some of us, it takes a little bit of faith, oh God. For others, God, it takes just a smidgen, oh God. And for, the, for some, it takes a whole lot, God, about our giving. But God, remind us that you are a generous giver. Remind us, God, through our giving, we can become spiritually mature. Remind us, God, that in our giving, we're around in blessings of wellness, God, finances, relationships, health, oh God. Remind us, God, that through our giving, God, we can plan and prepare for the future, God. We thank you. That you will bless every household, God, under the sound of my voice, oh God. That you will meet every need, oh God, because you are our provider, oh God. As we trust you, God, with the 10, the, the 15, the 20, 25, God, the 100 percent, God, you will meet every need. We won't go lacking. God, we have so much room we can bless someone else with it, God. We're looking. We're looking for the windows, God. They're open. We'll be ready to receive the blessings you have for us, oh God, that we don't have room enough to store. We're looking forward to having our mind blown, oh God, because of our faithful giving, our generosity, God, of our time, our talent, our treasure, God. We're looking forward, God, for the abundance that you will send this way, oh God, that we may meet the needs, God, of all good folk, of Stone Mountain, Georgia, God, of the state of Georgia, God, that we can meet the needs, oh God, across this great world that you have created, God, through what's going to be raised through this fight of believers, God. We call no good thing, oh God. No good thing, oh God. We know you are the God that owns a thousand cattle on the hill, oh God. We know, oh God, that we, uh, we serve a God who does not change, oh God. We know, oh God, that your love for us is everlasting. And that includes caring for us, oh God. So God, we're gonna trust you with all that we have. We're gonna trust you like the, the important man Naaman did for his healing, oh God. We're gonna trust you, God, like the woman did when she made the hot water cornbread for the prophet, God, with her man. We're gonna trust you, God, like the little boy with the lunch, oh God, that helped feed the community, oh God. We're going to trust you, oh God, with the woman that gave all that she had of the penny, God. We're going to trust you with all that we have. Because, God, we know you've given to us. So bless us. Not only by finances, God, those that are praying for help and deliverance. We pray, oh God, that they will continue to seek you, God. And we'll walk along with them, God. Those who want to know you better, God, we pray that they will call out and shout out, I want you to know who you are, God. And we'll walk alongside you, God. Those who said yes to you today, God, we, work, we welcome them to this body, oh God. You may meet the need, oh God, spiritually, for them to grow in you. We give you praise, God. We give you glory, God. We're here for another Thanksgiving, God. We thank you, God. Another Thanksgiving is on its way, God, in spite of all that we're going through, God. In spite of what's going on in our own lives, God, Thanksgiving week is here. Thank you, God. For that. But let us know 
You're still God. You're still in control. You're still on the throne of history. And we ask this prayer, oh God, in Jesus' name. And all God's people say amen and amen. My friends, let us stand for the benediction. May God keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May you also be strengthened and mighty. May God continue to watch over your entire family and multiply all that you have. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. This